All right, what's good everybody? Today we are going to be doing our 1.1 activity. Uh, yesterday we did our 1.1 notes. Today we're doing our 1.1 activity. Um, again, remember, usually each lesson will take two days. The first day, which you did yesterday, was the notes and the textbook homework. And then we'll follow up with uh, the next day doing an activity to really uh, tie everything together. Hey, before we begin, are there any questions from the homework? Um, remember, this is the beginning of the year. Uh, keep that 100%. Uh, your homework should always be on a blank sheet of paper. Your homework is technically not due until the end of this period. Uh, and then you should have some time after the activity uh, as well. Okay, but remember, the homeworks are always, uh, the solutions are always posted. There's really no reason why you should never not turn in a homework assignment. So make sure you're doing everything that you can to keep that 100% until we get uh, to our first quiz. Okay, today our activity is on can Joy smell Parkinson's disease? Okay, so jo Joy Milne participated in a study where she was given 12 t-shirts, half of which were worn by Parkinson's patients and half of which were worn by a control group. Joy correctly identified 11 out of the 12 shirts of who belonged to a Parkinson's patient and who did not belong to a Parkinson's patient. Does this provide convincing evidence that Joy can smell Parkinson's? And here is a video to uh, show what this is about. Joy Milne first noted something odd about her husband's scent when he was 45. Shortly afterwards, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's. Now universities are testing if it's a coincidence or a newfound precaution. Here's Mike McCarthy from our British partner, Sky News. When she was a teenager, Joy Milne started to realize that she had an acute sense of smell. But it was only when she noticed a change in her husband Les's odor that the incredible potential of her super sense became clear. He was an aesthetist, he was in a close situation in theatres and he was working long hours and I presumed, and it, the, the Parkinson's tiredness had kicked in then, but we didn't know that. Um, and because he was so tired, I, I just thought, well, you're not showering enough, and I said so. Joy didn't know what the smell was until she recognised uh, it in other sure people and said so at a work. meeting to discuss. Okay, so that's good. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and go back to the notes then. Anyways, she was able to smell the shirts and figure out which shirts had uh, were Parkinson's patients and which shirts were not Parkinson's patients. Okay. After uh, hearing this information, go ahead and do questions one through four on your own on the front page. You can pause the video. Okay. After completing questions one through four, all right, next, go ahead and log into this tinyurl.com, right? Uh, click on do this independent activity, do this activity independently. So if you look, right, this is after you type in the URL, this is what would show up. Go ahead and click on do this activity independently, okay? Uh, all you need to do is go through and guess, do you think that this shirt has Parkinson's? Yes, yes, no whatever, guess whatever you want. And then once you finish guessing, um, then it'll tell you how many you got correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and just finish this. All right, and it shows that I got eight out of 12 correct. This is purely just by guessing. After doing this, you are then going to um, fill in this table down here at the bottom, All right? Fill in this table here uh, on your own paper. See how many you got correct, how many got you got incorrect, um, and tally up your frequency, All right? Once you do that, uh, if we're it, while we're in class, um, if I'm not in class, this may be challenging, uh, but we will collect the student data Right, we will make a class results dot plot. Okay, so uh, for example, I got eight, I guessed eight correct. So I would put a dot here for an eight. Uh, that was my results. If somebody got one, if somebody got zero, somebody got three, four, multiple people got four, some people got five, 
most people got two, mo a lot of people got six, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We would just make a dot plot. Um, so if you can, even though if I'm not there, if you can somehow try to collect that data from your classmates, uh, that would be helpful. After, if we are able to get class data, okay, then we can go ahead and answer these next questions, six, seven, and eight. What does each dot represent? Each dot represents the number of correct guesses from each simulation of the experiment, right? So one dot represented my correct eight guesses, another dot uh, represented another student's two correct guesses, so on and so on and so forth. Okay, and based on the class data, what percent of simulations resulted in 11 or more correct identifications, right? Remember, uh, Joy was able to get 11 out of 12 correct. So how many from our class also got 11 out of 12 correct? Uh, obviously, this is a video, so I don't know. Uh, we'll see what that uh, data comes out to. Okay, and based on these results... Do we have convincing evidence that Joy can actually smell Parkinson's or do we think that she's just guessing and she happened to just get really lucky and get that 11 out of 12? Hey, after that, uh, we will always have um, the learning targets uh, that we will always write down on our activity. Again, just kind of uh, solidifying and cementing our learning of the lesson that we had done the day before. So go ahead, uh, our learning targets. Yesterday we learned about the difference between individuals versus variables. And then between variables, we learned about categorical variables versus quantitative variables. And then we also learned the difference between frequency tables and relative frequency tables, okay? After copying these down in the box, with the remaining time of class, you can go ahead and finish up these last few questions on our activity. Uh, once you finish your activity, you can go ahead and turn that into the inbox. You should be finishing the 1.1 textbook homework if you haven't, um, and then logging on to Google Classroom, finishing any of the missing surveys, either the get to know me or the show, you what you, show me what you know survey. And if you are done with all three of those, then you can go ahead and uh, continue working on your IXL diagnostic if you need to. Okay, that was our first activity. Um, go Mustangs.